Welcome to Wildlife Wednesdays. My name is Emma Jane and I'm the girl who tells you stories about Johnny McGorry. And this series is designed to help you and your family reconnect with Ireland's unique and wonderful wildlife. So within each series, we're going to talk about the animals that are in the Johnny McGorry book. And hopefully you might learn something and your little explorer might learn something too. If you find this useful, I would really appreciate if you could share and send it on to someone else you think might like it. Welcome to Wildlife Wednesdays. This week's episode is all about the beautiful swan, which has come over to actually say hello. So today is day four in the Magic of Wild book and we're speaking about the mute swan, or the Ayla, as we're known as Gaelga. So I'm here at Battle of Fa Lake in County Kildare in Ireland. And nearly every year for the last many, many years, we've had visitors in the winter time from the Hooper swans. And every year we have a visitor then from the mute swan in the summertime as you can see here behind me. So these absolutely stunningly beautiful birds come here to visit every summer and to lay their eggs, breed, and then they'll fly away then for the winter. So male and female swans look actually the same, but the male is slightly larger. So I can assume it's this guy here because his wife is probably sitting on her nest out in the distance there. But the males are called a cob, the females are called a pen, and then their babies are called cygnets. So the little baby cygnets then, when they hatch and they're born, usually around April time is when they come out. There might be about five in the, in the, in the nest, but they're gray in color. And everybody knows the story about the ugly duckling that was gray, didn't look like a swan, but then eventually turned into one of these beautiful things behind us. Characteristics wise then, the mute swan always, they're pure white, but they've got an orange beak and then they'll have a black knob at the top of their beak, as we can see there. With the Hooper swan then that visits us in winter, they actually have a practically a black beak and then a yellow part on the top of it as well. So a little bit different and their neck hasn't had that much of an arch as the mute swan does here behind us. So another known fact is that swans mate for life. So basically these guys, they'll wait until they're about four or five years old until they have their first set of babies, their first signets. But they go and stay with each other for a year and practice basically being husband and wife, practically on honeymoon for a year before they'll actually have their, uh, their first hatch of little babies. So the divorce rate actually amongst Irish swans is 3%, so it's pretty good. <laughs> so can you guess how many feathers the swan has? They have 25,000 feathers. That is what enables these absolute stunners to stay on the water all year round. In the coldest of weathers and in the harshest of frost, they're still quite warm because they have layers and layers of tiny thick feathers and then bigger feathers and bigger feathers and bigger feathers. So 25,000 feathers on a swan. So on average, swans will live for about 10 years, but the oldest recorded actually in 2012 is 28 years old. So what do these guys eat? Well, actually they mainly eat vegetables, but underwater vegetables. So they put their neck down underneath the water as far as one meter, and they'll graze at the bottom of the, of the water wherever they're living. They also then, they will come onto the bank and they'll eat some of the vegetation that's out here. They'll also eat some mollusks and even some small amphibians, such as frogs. Their signets then, when they're born, are obviously very small. They stay on the nest for only two days and then at that they go outside swimming with the mother and with the father and they eat for themselves straight away as well after two days. But they can make nice tasty food unfortunately for lots of wildlife out here such as foxes, such as pike, herons even. Uh, so I suppose the, the mother and father have to keep them protected and it's a common sight then to see uh, the mother swan letting the cygnets all climb up on her back and swim around with them if she thinks they're in danger. So now after you've watched this I need you guys to go get a book called The Children of Lear or even just look it up on YouTube and listen to the story. It is one of the most famous Irish stories of all time and involves beautiful swans, a wicked princess and basically 900 years of being turned into a swan until St. Patrick came and released them. So maybe go and have a look. It's brilliant. So that is today's episode on the mute swan. As always, would love to hear your feedback on it. Not an expert, just hugely passionate about these guys. So thanks a million for watching.